Hello Twitch and YouTube friends, this is Pancakes with Bacon, and in today's video, I wanted to talk a little bit about the new computer that I recently built, talk about a couple of the problems that I had while I was building it, and just talk about kind of the reasons why I wanted to build it and, and what it's going to hopefully allow us to do in the future. Like I said, I'm starting up a video log series as we start transitioning over from a Twitch-centric kind of broadcast mentality to more of a YouTube video production. And I kind of want to go through all of the different parts and things I'm considering and thinking about as we move forward with this whole YouTube adventure before we get to our actual new channel, which like I said before, will be coming. But one of the aspects of this, and in a previous video I talked a little bit about the new recording setup with the new camcorder and the Zoom H1 audio recorder so that I could, I could kind of get a little bit better quality video for YouTube. I'm going to talk a little bit about the computer now that's going to hopefully enable some gameplay kind of videos, recordings, and things like that. So for anybody who's followed me for some time, you know that the computer I built for streaming was not what you would consider a high quality or a top of the line computer. When I originally got into Twitch streaming back in August 2014, I wanted to maintain a relatively small investment because I didn't know how far it would go. I didn't know how much I would like it, but I also knew I didn't want to do that on my main machine. So I built a relatively modest computer with an AMD FX 8320 processor, 8 gigabytes of RAM, an R9 270 video card, very middle of the road, nothing, nothing crazy, even from 2014 standards, nothing crazy at all. But as I continued to, to move forward with Twitch and starting with YouTube and things like that, I really thought about, well, I really want some more power. And it's been a while since I've built a true power machine. And that was why I decided, you know what, it was time, a little Christmas gift to myself. I wanted to build a brand new machine, a brand new computer, that would basically obliterate anything I throw at it. Now, it's still not what you would consider like a top, top of the line kind of thing, because I didn't want to spend thousands of dollars on it. I don't think you, there's a point of diminishing returns when you spend too much money. You spend too much money on something and the performance that you get for that extra investment goes down. And we've seen this all over the place. And if anybody uh, frequents any of the tech kind of websites like Tom's Hardware or Anand Tech or anything like that, you'll see that past a certain point of investment, so past a certain point where you start putting money into things, you start not getting that same kind of performance. So generally speaking, you think, well, I'm going to spend 50% more on something. I expect 50% greater performance. Well, not really. That doesn't really happen with a lot of the higher end parts. Sure, you get, you get the bragging rights of having the top of the line everything, but you don't necessarily get the intrinsic performance that you would expect by spending X percentage more than the lower or than the less part, the last part in the series or anything like that. So I didn't want to go ultra top of the line because there's really, you don't really get as much for your investment. So I kept it kind of middle of the road. The machine itself cost, and these were with Black Friday sales, so it cost probably around $1,500, $1,600, and I built it myself. So just to go through some of, the, some of the specs and things that I put in there, we have an i7-5820K, six-core processor with hyper-threading. So anybody who knows CPUs or the, the kind of the Intel hierarchy of things, this is the bottom of the line extreme edition processor or enthusiast edition processor that Intel has right now. It's based on the Haswell E architecture. Uh, and basically there are three CPUs that use that architecture right now. And it's uh, the chipset or the, the chip itself is an LGA 2011 V3 chip. So that's, that's referring to how the CPU, the, the actual uh, CPU socket on the motherboard. But basically there are three models right now. And I went with the 5820K, which is the lowest of the three models, uh, because when you start getting up higher and higher, it costs prohibitively more money and you don't get as much performance out of it. So there's obviously, there's the second one, and I can't remember the exact nomenclature on that one, but that is also six cores with hyper-threading. Uh, so it's just a faster speed CPU, and it also enables greater, or I think it enables 40 PCI Express three lanes, whereas this one only enables 28. But I'm not running SLI or anything that would require multi-GPU right now, and even if I did, I wouldn't go to like try SLI, which is where it would really benefit. So I'm not, 
I'm not terribly upset about that. And then the top of the line is, I believe, the i7-5960X, I think it's called. And that is an 8-core with hyper-threading CPU. So approximately six, so 16 threads basically can run at the same time. That one is ridiculously expensive. It's like $900 or something like that. And I wasn't about to spend that much money on something that would really not give me that much more performance. Now, if I was just doing video editing, you could make the argument, or video rendering, you can make the argument for more cores is better. But from a gaming and partial video editing kind of thing, the six core is kind of the sweet spot in my opinion. And I think you get the best bang for your buck with going with the 5820K. Beyond that, for GPU, because really the key pieces of the, soft, of the system is the CPU and the GPU, right? Everything else, while important, is kind of tangential. For the GPU, we went with the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 970. I went with an EVGA model that had that was considered super clocked, so it has a special custom cooling kind of thing. This I got a ridiculous deal on. I got it for around $290 on one of the Black Friday sales. It normally goes for $320 to $330, and there are multiple models that are a little bit more expensive, less expensive, whatever. But $290 is pretty much a bottom price for a quality card, from what I could tell. The other nice thing about that card. It has four gigabytes of video memory, video RAM. Now, anybody who's been following this GTX 970 fiasco knows that there's some ambiguity about whether it's truly four gigabytes or three and a half gigabytes of video memory and how NVIDIA and the marketing is kind of all over the place. It doesn't really bother me at all. I'm not gaming at, I'm not going to, it's not going to bother me. I mean, it's not something that's going to affect you Really, I've watched a few test videos and things like that, and honestly, it's only going to come into play at ultra high uh, definition kind of textures and things that are really eating up the memory. For most, for the most part, you're not ever going to see an issue, and for the price, it was totally worth it. Still, a major upgrade from what I was using. Beyond that, some of the standard uh, system specs: I got an MSI X99A Raider motherboard which is not all that expensive, but it did include USB 3.1, which is something that I wanted to include just because well, I figure that's gonna be the future, uh, or at least the near future. So I wanted to have the ability to use USB 3.1 if I wanted to. It also came with a ridiculous number of SATA ports. I think it had around 10 SATA ports on board, which I'm using one for a Blu-ray writer, uh, one for a terabyte hard drive, and I only went with a terabyte because I don't usually use it for a lot of storage. I'll probably, I use external storage for a lot of my media and things like that, so I don't need a whole heck of a lot internal to the machine. Um, and I also got a solid state drive, the M2 form factor, with one of the new super fast Samsung uh, SSDs. It writes at like 2200 megabyte per second. I don't know. It, it writes really fast and it reads really fast and it, it just overall makes me happy inside. So I got that and plus since it's an M2 slot it doesn't really take up one of the one of the drive bays or anything like that. Very small form factor so I really did like that. Got 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM which some people would say is overkill but well I kind of wanted 32 gigabytes of RAM. I've never had that much RAM. The most I've ever had in any machine is eight and I figured well if I'm going to be making a pretty decent system, I might as well go for broke. So I got that, and I put all of this inside a Rosewill Thor V2 PC case, which is a massive tower, and, and you could look it up online, and I can I could even post a video or a photo of it. But it's a really big tower, tons of bays, tons of uh, cooling options, it comes with four case fans, it has a lot of cable management and things like that. It worked for me. I, I really did like it. And then I got a one kilowatt PSU, also by Rosewill, uh, the Quark model, Quark 1000, so one kilowatt of power potential. I think it's an 80 platinum efficiency. So all of that, all of that for with the Black Friday sales only came out to $1,500, $1,600, something like that, which, which was really, I was okay with that. I mean, that, that made me kind of happy because for something like this, I think normally that would have been a couple hundred dollars more expensive. So is it economical? Not particularly, but is it is it better than what it could have been? Yeah, it is. And as far as gaming and things like that, I've gamed a little bit on it. I've played some Just Cause 3 on it. It consistently maintains around 70 frames per second with everything jacked up. And basically, I'm using, right now, I'm only using the one monitor behind me. So these are three Dell U2412M monitors. 
They have 1920 by 1200 resolution, so it's a little bit different than your standard 1920 by 1080. But in any event, running it at that resolution with everything maxed out on Just Cause 3 gets around 70 frames per second. It doesn't really dip at all. And that was with recording. That's while recording gameplay to the hard drive using OBS multi-platform, which anybody who's done any streaming or recording, OBS stands for Open Broadcasting Software, I think, or System, something like that. Uh, and basically it lets you record gameplay. I was recording gameplay to the hard drive at 15 megabit per second. With all that going on, it really didn't skip a beat and didn't really do, didn't really cause any sort of performance issue at all, which, which made me very happy. The other nice thing, and I don't know if you guys have heard this before, my current streaming machine that I've been using, when I start recording video or when I start playing a game, the CPU fan, which is just a stock, stock CPU cooler, revs up insanely and it's so audible at least it's audible to me i don't know if it's been coming across on the on the recordings quite as much but very audible this thing i was playing at full settings doesn't make a single doesn't make a noise i didn't go overkill with the cpu cooling i went with the hyper or cooler master hyper hyper 212 evo cpu cooler so a lot of people will say well maybe you should have gone with water cooling or something like that i don't need it I'm not going to overclock this, even though I know it's very overclockable. I just don't really do the overclocking. Although I have been thinking about just doing like a toy build for, well, toy build, for an overclocking kind of experiment. I've been thinking about that. I might do something like that. I might not. I'm not so sure right now. In any event, that is the PC. That is the PC that I built that will hopefully bring us through this YouTube adventure when we eventually get the new channel set up and everything like that. I'll be back again to talk more about our setup and more about the thoughts behind the new YouTube channel. But until then, I hope everybody has an amazing day, whatever it is you're doing. Rest up, relax, recharge, and I will talk to you in the very near future. Take care, my friends.